Hello, mathematicians, puzzlers, and other curious people. It's almost Thanksgiving, which means we might be thinking about cooking. We might be thinking about Christmas shopping, although it's still too soon, except it's kind of not if we don't want it to pile up at the end. There's always that, always that struggle of starting too soon and getting tired of it or waiting too late and not having enough time. And there's probably some optimization problem that could be done about that, but that's not what I'm going to do today. Today, I'm going to direct our attention in more arts and crafts type of direction. So one common uh, visual representation of Thanksgiving is the cornucopia, also known as the Horn of Plenty. Uh, it's, a, it's a spiraling shape, starts out very small at one end, but grows to the other end where different stuff can be put into the horn. So how is this tying into math? Well, there are a lot of mathematical ways to draw a spiral, and I'm going to show you one way in this sketch. Now you can also do this uh, using pencil and paper and a straight edge and compass. Uh, I find GeoGebra is really convenient because we can move stuff around but it keeps all the geometric relationships in place, even as it's being moved around. So by doing that, we can really see the math that's involved in the shape, and it can be really useful for design purposes. So as we often do when we're sketching something in GeoGebra, we begin with a point. Now that point becomes the center of a circle. And another thing that happens is we put a circle going back the other way from it. So far, it seems pretty straightforward. Don't worry, we're going to get over that. So now I'm going to sketch a line between or a line segment between those points. And I'm going to get a perpendicular line coming off of one of them. Now, this point here is interesting to me, that intersection. Now, one thing you might notice is that this point is gray where the others were blue. That shows which ones can be moved around freely and which ones are determined by others. So as you can see, I can move C around. D stays in place, but the line and segment and point E and the circles that connect them move around along with it. I can do the same thing with D. But no matter I, how hard I drag E, it just doesn't budge because it's determined by points C and D. So the next thing I can do is sketch in the segment from the center to that new point. And from there, I can get another perpendicular line to that segment through E. Now, here's one thing I want to point out. This is actually somewhat growing. So it's growing kind of slowly, but still steadily anyway. And we can even look at how much it's growing by. So we can use this distance or length tool. We can say, okay, that's 1.9. Well, that's 2.6. Uh, we're not told what kind of units it is. It's just whatever unit was convenient. Now we can really see what's going on here. If we set it so that, yeah. So that this is one unit and you see that that's 1.4. So now let's continue the process. Whoops, that's not right on there. Uh, as you're making this intersection point, if you notice that it's blue, that means underdetermined. Usually that's because you slightly misclicked and it got off of that intersection. When you're uh, plotting a completely determined point in GeoGebra, unless you've messed with your settings, it's gray. If you've messed with your settings, uh, well, you're the one that did that. So you need to figure out what you did instead. Okay, so we had one, 1 1.4. Uh, let's see, we had, where, there you go, length measurement. Okay, we get 1.7. Now you might notice that these aren't exact measurements because I can drag this in a few pixels one way or the other and it still says it's one unit right here, 
even though we know it's a little bit longer or shorter. So we need to leave some room in this next one. But what I'm going to do is repeat that process again. So, so here's something I want to point out. This uh, distance between E and F is the same as the distance between E and D, because those are each a radius, the circle centered on E. And from E to D is the same as from C to D for the same reason. It's a different radii of a circle, this time centered on D. So those distances are all one unit long. That's important. Let's see. Where was I? Drew a circle. Now, okay, so now I need the perpendicular line. So I want a line perpendicular to this segment going through that point. And I want a segment from that intersection. You'll see that it's gray as it should be to the center. Now, depending on how exact these lengths are turning out, we can look in this and see, okay, so this is two, it should be. Now, why should that be two? Well, what we have here is actually an application of the Pythagorean theorem. So here we have a right triangle. You can see that that does seem to be a 90 degree angle. In fact, we can even use the angle measurement tool to check it. So you see that that's a 90 degree angle, as is this and this. That's not a coincidence. It's because we've been using perpendicular lines coming off of those segments. But one result of that is that we would be able to use the Pythagorean theorem here. So uh, if you don't recall the Pythagorean theorem, the Pythagorean theorem right off. It says that if you take the, the two shorter sides of a right triangle and square their measurements, you will get the square of the hypotenuse. That's the longer side, the, the side that's not touching the right angle. So let's see, we have one squared plus one squared. Well, that's one and one, that makes two. So what we have here is the square root of two, which is about 1.4 that I'm moving around right here. Then, okay, we have the square root of two squared. Well, that's two again, plus one squared. Well, squared is just one. So let's see, two plus one gives us three. Well, the square root of three is about 1.7. Okay, square root of three plus one, or sorry, square root of three squared plus one squared so the three plus one, well, that's four. Square root of four is two. So this is stepping out through mostly irrational numbers, but some integers when we get to a perfect square root or a perfect square that we're taking a root of. And you can see that that's a, a rather a slow rate of growth, but still noticeable we can definitely see that it's coming further and further out. Well, now we can just continue this process. So let's see, circle, perpendicular, simple segment, circle, perpendicular, simple segment, circle, perpendicular, simple segment, circle with radius one, perpendicular to the previous segment through that corner, and then a simple segment connecting back to the center. And we just keep going. Circle, perpendicular. I notice now that we're off the screen, but we can drag this around, so that's fine. Simple segment. Circle. perpendicular, 
segment and circle and perpendicular and segment circle whoops and I'm off okay undo that no I still want a perpendicular line to that through that point that's another nice thing about using GeoGebra. There's an undo button. So if you misclick anything, it's easy to fix. And then a simple line segment. And we just continue the process. Circle. Perpendicular. Segment. Circle, perpendicular, whoops, I skipped a step. That's okay, it's easy to fix. Segment, then the circle, already did that. So I need the perpendicular again. And then the segment. And I need to scoot this over again because we're starting to get close to running off the page. And then let's see. So I notice we're starting to get crossed up with some previous lines. So that's going to make it a little harder to work with. I'll show you in a minute something we can do about that. Perpendicular segment. Okay, so you see how that was a little tricky try to click on the right spot. We had to be really careful to make sure that we clicked on the right intersection, not the other one. So one thing we can do in GeoGebra about that is we can hide parts of the graph that we're not interested in. So we can come over here and say, okay, what if we just hide all these extended out lines? Let's see. I'll leave the circles for a minute. Those can be useful depending on exactly what you're planning to do. And we don't really need to look at those angles. Those were just to notice something. Let's see the segments I want to keep. Line. You can also zoom out. Okay, there's something. There. There's something. And there's one that I don't really need. And I don't really need that first inner circle for anything now. But the big circles help a little bit with the visualization, so I'm going to keep them for now. Now if we zoom way out, you can see that. If you want to, you can even hide the segments. I'm going to keep that last one, but we can do without the rest. It takes a moment. But you just have to kind of keep an eye on it. OK, so if we move out, we can definitely see that it's forming a spiral. OK, now we can still continue, even though we've hidden all that stuff now. And we can see, OK, there's the next circle. 
Uh, did I hide the circle? Not the circle through Q. Hmm. Ah, there. I hid that one by mistake. Yeah. Sometimes you misclick, but it's easy to fix, so that's okay. Okay, so again, circle, perpendicular, and then draw back a segment because we need something to do something perpendicular to next time. And then just continue circle, perpendicular, circle. Oh, but we need that segment to draw the perpendicular line. Now you'll notice that this is wrapping around and making a proper a proper spiral out of all these circles. Let's see, where was I? Perpendicular. So I need to draw this segment to the center. And then another circle. And a perpendicular line through its center and a segment going to the spiral center. And we can just keep going. Circle, perpendicular, segment. Now you'll notice that we have, let's see, four different segments coming through here where our first time around, we just had one segment from C out to D and then from C out to E. That's not a coincidence that they're getting uh, more concentrated at this point. Um, remember that these are pointed to further out. So the further out, you're taking a, a step basically of one unit. Uh, the smaller that change in angle is going to be. Circle. perpendicular, and whoops, misclick. I know it's a misclick because it's blue instead. And segment, and then just one more. Circle, perpendicular, and segment. And really, you can stop anytime you want to, or you can keep going as long as you want to, and it'll continue making an expanding spiral that you can use to draw all sorts of different things with. So I hope that was interesting, uh, and, uh, and I hope that this gives you something you can uh, uh, do over your Thanksgiving, or if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, well, at least enjoy the fact that the, the harvests are in and we're not going to starve this winter. But one other thing about GeoGebra is you can expand and shrink the spiral and try out different angles. So if it seems to you like, like this is starting too far out, well, that's okay. You drag it in and make the spiral start out as tiny as you want to. Now you want to go around and hide all those linear elements. So the lines and segments. Uh, let's see. No, not the intersection, we need that. Let's see. Oh, what did I misclick? That, that circle. And there you go. So that is how you can use GeoGebra to draw, or at least start to draw. Feel free to continue as many cycles around as you need to, to start to draw a cornucopia. So if you'd like to go ahead and do that, and uh, I'd be curious to see what some of you come up with that way. So until next time, uh, have fun playing with math.